Hi everyone, my name is Tyson Swetnam. I'm a research assistant professor at the University of Arizona and I work for the Cybers Project. I'm here to talk about a series of workshops which we've taught called Foundational Open Science Skills and some of the lessons learned which we've gained. When I think about the knowledge that today's researchers need, I think about uh, an understanding of the fair data principles, uh, a commitment to publishing in open access journals, and being able to use and contribute back to free and open source software, which is the real acronym for FOSS, which we use as a play on words for our camp. I think about working with linked data, which have ontologies and schema that are machine readable and therefore searchable and findable by the researchers. And last, uh, a DevOps mindset where your research group can develop living code and data which use things like continuous integration and continuous analysis frameworks. This survey of NSF Life Science PIs found that today's researchers are not lacking for access to enough computational resources or to data storage. Uh, in fact, there are many options available. The greatest unmet need is actually in uh, training. We have a lack of skilled workers who are able to leverage the resources that are available. Cybers uh, is an NSF funded project. It's going into its 13th year, it originated as the iPlant Collaborative. Uh, you can see that our vision is to transform science through data-driven discovery. And our mission is to design and deploy and expand a national cyber infrastructure for life sciences research, and importantly, to train scientists in its use. So we're here to help train people. Uh, when I think of cyber infrastructure, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is a data center. But in fact, uh, cyber infrastructure is a combination of hardware and software platforms. And critically, it's the people who can provide training and support on how to use these things. So why should you attend an open science skills workshop? Uh, for some people, it might be that they want to know how to scale their analyses. For others, it might be that they want to write an excellent data management plan that'll help them get the next research award they need to do their work. And for some, it might be just to finish their analyses in time to graduate. So how did we teach this workshop? Uh, the first thing is that we developed documentation using Read the Docs on a website. All of our lessons are there. We created containers for the students to use uh, using platforms like our studio and, and Jupyter Notebooks. And we hosted these on GitHub. And the students themselves come into the course and they create their own Docker containers and they uh, use GitHub by the time that they leave. Our first class uh, was taught in summer of 2019. Uh, we only had a couple of months to prepare for it um, and we had an even shorter time to advertise so we ended up only having about seven attendees we offered them a concierge service after they left and uh, a really excellent thing happened one of our attendees was able to write a, a nsf uh, proposal which was then funded and a, we call it lovingly foss on the road our uh, lessons learned were that trying to teach everything about data science in one week is not really viable. Um, there's too much to, to throw at people. Um, the favorite lesson that they actually had was given to them by one of the members of our business school on, on how to develop a collaboration culture. So they learned about their own personality traits and what to look for uh, in those in their lab. And um, also one of the problems we had was that the variety of skill levels, we had beginners and we had advanced folks and trying to teach the same things to those people isn't uh, really a good use of everyone's time. Our second course took place in February. We were able to refine our material. Uh, we had over 30 attendees in this one. Uh, and we were able to manage breakout sessions where we, we could take advanced uh, users and give them more skills and take the early participants and give them those basic level skills that they need. We followed a carpentry style, carpentry style instruction. And uh, for example, uh, the students were able to take the HIV genome and uh, build a workflow where they assemble that genome and make it reproducible using uh, platforms like GitHub and Cybers. Uh, we also had them take uh, the data from the Event Horizon Telescope, uh, that black hole image you see on the right, and reproduce that using uh, the new GitHub actions. In fall of 2020, uh, we're moving to an online framework. We all know why. We'll be doing this in collaboration with another NSF supported project called the Cubes Hub. Um, and so we will stretch the workshop into a semester long course uh, where we'll meet every other week. Hopefully this will be enough time for uh, folks to absorb all the material that we're going to be uh, providing to them. And it's open now if you'd like to enroll, you can go to cybers.org. Uh, I want to thank our funding sources, the NSF, and uh, most importantly thank all of the many researchers who have come and, and shown their amazing work and uh, contributed back to the FOSS workshop. Thank you for your time.